I'm Fido, and it is good to be here. So as was mentioned, we started the company seven years ago with a focus of identity verification. And it is a big problem. So over 5% of the world GDP is laundered money. And what is worse is less than 1% of that is caught. So that's almost 200 trillion that is laundered money every year. Identity theft is the largest crime and the fastest growing crime. And what tends to happen is that the common thing amongst all these fraudsters is identity theft because they don't want to get caught. And that's the fundamental problem that we set out to uh, address when we started seven years ago. And all these funds are used for the bad things. You could think of human trafficking, drug trafficking, terrorist financing, and so on. So how did we work on solving this? And fundamentally, how can machine learning and, and AI pay, play a role? Well, it's not easy. Who can guess which one of these photos of faces are fake? Well, the answer is all of them are fake. AI has been used to create all of these fake faces. And it doesn't get much easier when you consider photos of government IDs either. Again, who can tell which one of these are fake? There are many different ways of cheating and trying to create fraudulent IDs. And so the problem is a, a large one. So what we do is we power 1,500 businesses. And as and when a customer is signing up to one of these businesses, such as an online remittance platform, for instance, at the point of registration, they take a photo of their driving license, for instance, and a short recording of their face. And then what's happening behind the scenes is that we're using machine learning to verify that identity to ensure it's not fake and to compare the photo on that identity with the person's actual face. So we have about a 30 second session or journey to collect that data from the customers. And then I'm going to share a little bit more about how we use machine learning to, or AI to actually stop uh, the bad actors. And before I do, I just want to explain a little bit about artificial, artificial intelligence more broadly, which you could think of as the cognitive mind and the trying to replicate that. Whereas our focus is more narrow AI or machine learning, which is taking much more of a repetitive task and try to repeat those cognitive functions. In our case, often uh, pattern recognition or, or similar. And there are a number of different models that run. One is classification, another is extraction. It can be facial verification and a number of different ones for different fraudulent techniques, which I've got some images on to explain exactly how it works. So if we consider that you are looking to see if the person on this, the photo on this driving license matches the person who submitted that photo, you're going to look at their nose, their eyes, and a few different features and try to assess as to whether it's the same person or not. And this is fundamentally sort of our task too, but it's to use machine learning models to do so. So the R score on here would be about 0.75, one meaning 100% certain and, and zero being definitely not. So this is a graphical representation of what's happening behind the scenes. And these neural nets uh, are, you could think of it as how the, it's, it's trying to simulate the human mind and how it connects uh, neurons, for instance. This is with facial recognition, and this is a similar one for spotting patterns on government IDs. But it's not easy because part of it is to spot patterns and see what a genuine identity looks like. And another one is to spot patterns and see what, uh, something that, whether it's fraudulent or not. And even the human mind can struggle with spotting patterns. If you look at these, for instance, and, and, and try to guess and try to match some of these. So if we can at times struggle, or if it takes us a few seconds, you can imagine it's not necessarily easy for machine learning models. So that's why human feedback loops are critical to this. And what happens behind the scenes is if a face, for instance, this is a facial match model, matches, all is fine. But if the model suspects that an image from a phone is being shown, that suggests this is potentially a fraudster. And there are confidence scores that are built. So if the confidence is low, then a human fraud expert is required and needed to look at it, label it. That then goes on to train the models further, and that goes into ghost mode, which is essentially non-live production, and ultimately goes back into, uh, or goes into live production. So it's a continuous feedback loop, and it fundamentally requires the best of what technology is able to do, as well as what humans are able to do and contribute. 
So let's look through an example. So for the next five minutes, we're all going to break bad and pretend as though we are fraudsters. And so what I want you to consider is your purpose now is to cheat an online remittance platform, for instance. And you have a lot of money to launder, or for whatever reason, you want to commit a bad act, and you need to figure out how to cheat that system. So you have to show your ID. You have to go through a liveness check, which has a series of tasks, such as moving your head or reading through randomly generated numbers. And that's essentially all you have to do. So if you take a moment to think about what would be the first thing you'd try, most of us would go and find a, someone else's government ID. So let's assume you go to your flatmate and you just take their identity and you try to submit their identity with your face. Well, that's a pretty basic way to try to cheat the system and that will fail because it won't match on the person's face. The score on, on the, from the photograph on their identity will be different to your face and that will fail. But now we're gonna become more sophisticated as a fraudster. So next, you may try their, to produce their documents with a, a photo of their face. So you may take their driving license and you might go to their Facebook profile and take a photo of that. Or you might take an actual photo and print out that photo and take a photo of that. So what's happening behind the scenes is that machine learning models in this example, at the top is a genuine selfie, so that's fine. But if it's a picture of a picture, then the models are suggesting that this looks potentially suspicious. So heat maps are created. And when a human is double checking this, they can more clearly see and put the broader context into it and see, for instance, that this, in fact, is a fake. And over time, the training improves it, so these thresholds become even more certain. Another thing that you might do as you're becoming more sophisticated is you take a photo of your flatmate, you print the photo of their face, you create a mask, and you put that on your face. And, and you're super smart now, you're gonna uh, cheat the system. Well, you can develop models over time, and you have to remember like tens of millions of faces going through these tasks. So neural networks are being built and, and expectations around what the thresholds are improving constantly. So if you focus on the blue line, when it's a genuine rotation of the head, the blue line tilts up. But on the right-hand side, it stays a lot more flat. So again, this triggers a suspicion that this is a low confidence on the right-hand side that it's an actual genuine head rotation, and in fact, it's a face mask. So this would trigger a human to double check in some cases, whereas if it's obvious and the thresholds are clearly low, i.e. this is most certainly a fake, then it is essentially treated as such. Now you might consider taking a video of your flatmate and you'd ask them maybe randomly, can you rotate your head, can you blink, and you, 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 you try to copy all the tasks that they would do, and you submit a video recording of them when the task comes up. And let's assume the task is, for instance, for you to rotate your head. These tasks are uh, anonymized, uh, excuse me, or randomized. So the user doesn't know what task they're going to be asked when they're submitting. Again, if it's a video recording and a video is being displayed, other machine learning models can be used to detect when that is happening. So it's either it's blue or it's red, suggesting which way they've actually rotated their head. But you might think that is all basic and that you're far too good as a fraudster to want to stop there, and, and you're pretty driven. So what you'd often do is, and this becomes more common, and yet is um, still seen as a moderate fraudster, you might add your own photograph to the photo on the passport of your flatmate's passport, for instance. Now what happens here is that this is your flatmate, and this is you. So with your flatmate, there's a 92%, if I just hold it still for a second. On the left-hand side, this is the, your flatmates, and there's a 91, 92% certainty that your, this is actually a genuine photo on that identity document. On the right-hand side is you as a bad actor that have, you've put your photograph on that, and there's a 98% certainty here that has been a swapped face, a different face that's been placed on there. So there's only a 2% confidence, essentially, that this is genuine, and, and so there's a 91% confidence on the right. So this is clearly a, a fake document or an attempt to cheat the system. With the growth of the dark web, you might go online, and you might try to find a template and put, populate it with your details and take a photo of that. Again, similarly, screenshot detection techniques can be built based on these models. You may try something else. You might print a fake document, with your details, print it out, 
and then try to take a photo of that printout. We built models to stop that. So as you can see here, this is a high degree, 98% or so, that this is a genuine uh, card-based identity. This is a printout. And this is of a video screen. So on the left-hand side, it's very certain, 99%, that is actually fine. In the middle, it's only 77, uh, there's 70% certainty that this is a photo of a photo. And on the right-hand side, it's 90% certainty this is a photo of a screen. So if you take the middle example, and it was maybe 10 or 20% certain that this is a photo of a photo, a human would double check and annotate and then improve the models over time so that next time it'd be a more improved accuracy score. And you could buy a physical counterfeit from the dark web. But when the models are analyzed, there may be a dot that is spotted that is uh, an anomaly. So here there may be this, the, the font on the three is two or three millimeters out of place. But the issue is, is that this passport may have been stained because it was put through a washing machine, so it's a genuine user. Or it could be a, a sophisticated fraudster that has tampered with a font to base, be able to cheat the system. And that is why there's a feedback loop that's needed, but over time, if this is seen over and over again, essentially the accuracy just keeps improving. And that's the fundamentals of using AI, or specifically in our case, machine learning, to stop bad actors. There are very many of them, and they are highly driven and very sophisticated, and becoming more sophisticated. So there's no scalable or effective way at addressing them or addressing the way to stop them unless machine learning models are used. And the most sophisticated ones are working in office block buildings, they have performance-related pay, they have sick pay, they have a, a range of different things. They're very driven to cheat systems. So in order to counter that, the best technology and the most recent uh, and, and enhancements need to be used to do so. So we're in a fortunate position that we've been able to not just work in the financial inclusion and financial access to services, but soon as prescription drugs coming to your home, self-checking into a hotel, and even voting one, what one day in our view will be all done online. Because machine learning models are able to prove and show how we are able to open access and essentially help everyone fundamentally 98% easily gain access to services while stopping 2% of the bad actors. And the more effective we become at stopping the bad actors, the 2%, the more effective and the more easily we'll be able to onboard the other 98%. And that's essentially the trade-off. So my details are here. And do feel free to reach out on, on Twitter or otherwise. And I'll be around for the next hour if anyone has any other specific questions. Thank you for listening. And the best of luck with your startups.